Hey there, welcome back. Amanda with the Happy Homestead here. It is an exciting day today because we are gonna go get our honey frames from our beehives. So this is gonna be filmed over a two day period and today I am just getting the frames. I've got some bins here in the back of my car that are specific to bringing your frames to a separate location and then extracting. So we're gonna extract within our electric extractor tomorrow, but today I just wanna get the frames. So I have this, this is called the Hive Butler and it's really no different than maybe a typical plastic tote except for one thing. Inside, there are grooves where you can put frames in. You'll see there's some honey and wax <laughs> down in here, but there's grooves so that you can actually put your frames in and they hang in without having to touch the bottom. So I intend to put my frame, and I have two of two, well, one hive butler and then another bin here from Man Lake Bee Supply Company. So the goal is to put all 30 frames in between these two bins, take them home, and like I said, extract tomorrow. All right, I've got my bins loaded in my wagon. We're gonna head over to the bees in just a minute. But I wanted to explain some of the process of what I'm doing for just a minute here. Um, usually, and normally, a lot of beekeepers will use smoke to help calm the bees and get the bees off of the frames so that they can take the frames. I don't have luck with that. And it's user error, for sure. <laughs> it's me. And it's because I just don't find that no matter what I put in my little smoker, the smoke doesn't last long. And so, and I need it to last long. Maybe, maybe I'm slow, maybe it's just burning too fast. I'm not sure. So I have found Fisher's Be Quick. And I actually used this last year with a lot of success. And so I'm using that again this year. So I'm not using any smoke today. And this is um, an all natural, non-toxic formula. It's mainly, and it smells so good, and that is because it's almond oil. It smells amazing. It's like a, it's almost like a cherry almond oil. It doesn't say on here, but I know if you look it up, that is the main ingredient. And so I have a piece of fabric here from my sewing station, just a scrap piece of fabric. And what I do is I spray the fabric with this and then I open the hive and drape this on top of the frames. Wait a few minutes. The bees are not a fan of this smell. So then they go down. They go further down into the hive, take the fabric off, and I can start taking my frames out and immediately putting them into my bins. That is my plan. So I'm gonna go into the middle hive first. That is the nuke that I installed this year. No honey is coming from that nuke. I'm just gonna inspect that hive first, make sure everything looks good, that I see a lot of brood, I see that those frames are filled out nicely, and that things look good. Then I'm gonna go to the hive on the right, which is my oldest and most original hive that overwintered from two years ago, so it's still going well, and that's the one that I split from earlier this year. That has one super on it, so 10 frames, and get those frames, and then I go to the other side of the hive bench and that is the split, right? With that original queen that we had done this spring and there's two supers on that hive. So there's 20 frames. So that is the plan. Get in and get out. <laughs> okay, so this is the nuke that I purchased this spring. haven't opened this hive up in a while. It's probably been at least a month, maybe five weeks. Um, but I expect, like I said, to see this top deep pretty well full and these bees active. And when you see this many bees, right, on these frames, this is a very good sign. 
This means my queen is laying eggs, she's hatching the bees, and um, they're doing well. And oh my goodness, you see all those eggs? I don't know if you can see that in the glare. This is all eggs. At the top here, this is honey. It's capped honey. It's capped with wax. This is all the eggs. It's called brood is what they call it. So that looks amazing. She is a laying machine. Okay, I'm satisfied with how this hive is doing. We're going to gently close it back up. There are a lot of bees all over the microphone. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. This is what's on the microphone and the bees, I remember this from last time, the bees are all in it, so. I had to take that off the microphone. But <laughs> you guys don't just hear buzzing. Open up the hive. Yield. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put the fabric on top and they will hopefully go down into the frame. I'm go down into the deep. Okay. We're gonna open this, it's only been about a minute, but I can tell the bees have gone down a little bit already. So we're gonna start putting some frames in the bin. Now I can see that not even all frames are full, so I will not be taking all of them. This one is not even capped. So I can only take frames that have capped honey. What that means is there's honey in the cells and they've capped it with wax. It's like they've put a top on it. Look at that, gorgeous. A lot of bees, I'm just gonna kind of brush the bees off a little bit. No doubt some bees are going to come home. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, it's dripping. Oh, it's gorgeous. Okay, one hive is done. I got about four frames maybe. But I am, and that's kind of what I was expecting. This was not a hive that I thought that would be totally full. And just with the time of year we're in, I don't expect them to complete these frames anymore for 2022. So um, we'll just take what we can get. And again, I'm gonna put then the frames back in here tomorrow because there will be remnants of honey and there'll be things that they can clean up and it just gives them something to do. Let's go to the double super hive. This is the bottom super of the two, and I can see there's probably about six or seven frames to harvest from. So again, I'm just gonna take what I can get.
I thought I was gonna have, well, I had 30 super frames, but right, 10 per super. So I was anticipating to having close to 30 frames to extract, but I can see I'm not gonna have that much. Okay, so I just checked that top super because I have it on the ground here. Every single one of the frames, this is called the foundation. This is a plastic foundation. It looks like it's got the honeycomb cells on it. And this is so that it gives the bees a head start to actually build their wax on top of this. As well as when you're extracting, the plastic is a much more durable and it will keep the frame from totally falling apart, which is, you don't want that. So we use these plastic foundations on our super frames, but we don't use that on our deep frames because we're not extracting from the deeps. So all 10 of these frames on that top super, they're not drawn out yet. So I put it on, I put this super on because the bottom one was, you know, 70 to 80% drawn out and I didn't want them to run out of room. I wanted them to keep going. Um, but clearly they didn't so and there's a couple of reasons for that it could be because the nectar flow they call it the nectar flow within the flowers and the trees and whatnot and the pollen we're kind of on that downturn right now and so that's why I'm harvesting right now because I don't expect the bees to be able to fill really too much more up between now and the end of the season so I'm gonna keep this super off I'm just gonna leave it here against the hive tonight I'll put it away tomorrow, but because there's bees still in here, I don't want to put it away now. I want them to go back into their hive at night. So we have 10 full frames to harvest tomorrow morning. I'll be honest, that's a lot less than I thought I was gonna get, but I'll take what I can get. Good morning, welcome back. You are in our garage and I'm just going to apologize right off the bat because this is the most horrible part of our home. It is a disaster for a variety of reasons. So I beg of you to please, please have forgiveness for having, for you having to have to see this. Uh, but this is where we're going to extract our honey. So I've got the extractor set up here behind me. I'll show that to you. I have our garage door open at the moment because it just lets the fresh air in. Otherwise it gets really steamy hot in here. I may have to close it as we get into this process because what happens is, is here's the extractor and our bucket that it's going to go into. And there is our bin, right, with our 10 frames. But what happens is when you get into this process, honeybees from basically like a five mile radius, <laughs> they can smell the honey and it's like, they just come in and, they're, and then they're basically robbing. They're like taking the honey. So um, there are a few bees left in our bucket that I'm not concerned about. But if I start seeing a lot more show up, then I'm gonna have to shut this. All right, so 10 frames. My kids are in the kitchen and out back with the dog and I'm praying I can get all these done <laughs> before something ensues with them because I also wanna get all of the honey into my honey gate bucket. And a honey gate bucket is really a five gallon bucket, but it has what this is called a honey gate, right? Where I can lock it and then all of the honey goes in here. Um, and then from here, you put it into your jars and you bottle it. So the goal today is to get the honey out of all 10 frames into a bucket, the bucket in the house, and the frames back to the hives. So I need to get started. Let's go. So this is a Maxant electric extractor. We bought this um, a few, uh, probably two or three years ago now. And it holds either three deep frames, and remember deeps are those bigger boxes, or six super frames. So I should be able to get six in at a time, but I will have to run each six, a batch of six twice, because I will flip them, right? This goes off centrifugal force. Okay, so you can see how this part of this frame has 
honey that is capped, right? We talked about the cap, this wax cap on the top. So I'm just gonna lightly take a fork and break it. You need to break the wax cap off in order for that honey to flow. And there are tools out there that do this. There are sophisticated ways. I find this to be the easiest way. I also don't want to damage the honeycomb, right? I'm just scraping that top layer of wax off because I really don't want to damage my honeycomb. I plan to give this back to the bees so that they can clean it back up. And that way for next summer, when I put these supers on, they're all ready, the combs are already built out and they're ready to be filled, filled. The combs are already built out and they're ready to be filled. That is the plan. Okay, we are ready to turn it on. Okay, the frames feel a lot lighter than they were going in. So you can kind of see if, it's, if you're able to. Um, oh, and here comes a bee from outside the garage. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to close the garage door here. Um, let me do that really fast. Well, I didn't close it fast enough before he came back in. Uh, anyway, so it might be harder to see now, but the glistening of the honey is, I mean, there's still obviously little remnants, but you can feel the weight of the frame and you can see that all of the honey has come out. So I'm going to check all six of these frames and then get the next four in. All 10 frames are complete. They are back in our hive butler to go back to the hives today and the bees will enjoy cleaning that up. So I've got my five gallon bucket down here. I closed the honey gate on the extractor because my filter here was getting a little full. So I'm just letting this flow through and then I'll open this back up to get the rest out. So it's been about four hours since you last saw me in the garage. I have gotten all of our honey in our bucket. I've cleaned the extractor. I took all the frames back to the bees. Uh, and I've also, so in the strainer, I've already got the dishwasher running with the strainers, but in the strainer, right, that was on top of this bucket um, was all of basically the wax cappings. And so that's what's in this little strainer. And so I'm kind of straining through the wax cappings. There's a little bit of honey in there. And then what I'll do this week is probably melt down this wax. It'll take a couple of times to clean through it and melt it. And then you have beautiful pure beeswax as well. So that's what's in this strainer are the wax cappings. So I'm just gonna set that aside. Here is our honey. It's about two and a half gallons. This is a five gallon bucket. It's just about half full, maybe a tad less than half, um, but pure, raw, unfiltered honey. Does that not look good? Is that actually real honey that we can actually just drink right now? Well, we can't drink it, but it is actual real honey. You just had a spoonful, remember? I think I need another one. Are you gonna take another one? Yeah. All right, but not a big one. This. 
<laughs> Alright, but not a big one. Not a big one. Why is uh, it? Uh, 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 uh. Why is I'll it? I'll get it. I'll get it. No, I'm gonna get it. Okay. Not a big one. What are the yellow, white stuff? That's just part of the honey. What's the... It's like sugar. It's like crystallized. What's the middle stuff? It's all honey, honey. Honey, honey. <laughs> I just Come on. It. Come on. Hey. Let's go. Okay, let's do this. That's too much. Whoa, too much. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, I know that's a lot, dude. Hey, I got it. All right, all right. No. Oh, okay, no more. No mm. more. Yummy. <laughs> Especially when you take all of it. Now go take your sugar rush and go elsewhere. <laughs> you can't put it back in. <laughs> Why? Because you've already put your mouth on that spoon. Okay. okay. So now that he's upstairs having a sugar rush, doing only God knows, <laughs> I've got my quart jars. I'm going to start bottling this up because I just want to get this put away. Um, I'm just going to do quart jars for now. And the reason is because it makes it easier. It's less jars that I have to deal with. And then if we want to parse some out into smaller pint jars or half pint jars for gifts and whatnot, we can. So I'm going to start here and just start bottling. This, by the way, out of the entire honey extraction process is the most satisfying. <laughs> The 2022 honey harvest is done. I went back to look to see what I did in 2021 and I only had eight frames to harvest then. So <laughs> at 10 this time, we've increased by two. And honestly, the time that it took today, um, just because I kept getting distracted with the children and dog and you know other responsibilities, I'm actually grateful I only had 10 frames to harvest. And we ended up with eight and a half quarts of honey so obviously we are not a big operation we are just backyard hobbyists with beekeeping and we only have three hives and only two of which we harvested from right because one was a nuke from this year so our goal is to always have between three and four hives and always you know have honey on hand and we still have some honey from last year we probably have four or five quarts left so we don't go through it enormously fast um so we and we also don't sell our honey right that may change someday when we have a lot more to harvest but this is really for our family and i use it for cooking i use it for our elderberry syrup i use it for tea uh fire cider when we make our fire cider i put some honey in so all kinds of things right but it, it really is for our family so if you're interested in beekeeping which I highly suggest you check out beekeeping in your area, find a mentor, find a local beekeeping group. And if you wanna just buy local honey from a local beekeeper, find someone that you can purchase from and put your money to their bees and not to the honey in the store. Thank you for joining me in our bee journey for 2022. Stay healthy, stay well, bye-bye.